What is up guys? My name is Ashley. Welcome to my YouTube channel, Becoming Ashnik, where I document my journey with multiple sclerosis. Just trying to show my life in hopes that I can help at least one person with everything that I've been through, making it all worth it for that one person. So today I, sorry, I am filming outside in public, like at this uh, trail that I used to walk all the time. Um, so if I'm looking around, that's why. But anyways, today I wanted to talk about a couple of things. Dealing with depression and anger, bitterness, um, just those negative feelings that can come along with chronic illness or really life in general. So this can help out more than just people dealing with chronic illnesses. In the beginning when I was in the process of getting diagnosed, I knew that the biggest battle I would face would be the battle in my mind. It took a while to tell people what I was going through to collect my mind and to build up strength. During that time, I had made a vow to God that, you know, knowing that the, the biggest battle would be in my mind, that every day when I woke up, I would thank God for the things that I could still do. Whether it was walking or talking or being able to use my hands to like open doors or, you know, the ability to walk up steps, like just everything that I was able to do, every single little thing, my goal was to wake up each day and thank God for all of those to maintain a positive attitude because I wanted to do everything in my power to prevent falling into a depression and even though I tried really hard it still kind of happened but you know the most important thing when you fall is to get back up and don't worry about who's looking at you or who you think is criticizing you based off of how you fell. What determines your future is how you rise after falling. Like that is what determines strength. September 2020, I reached the peak of depression and anger and anxiety with dealing with my, um, my journey with multiple sclerosis. And I couldn't quite figure out what was going on. I just, um, I also wanna like apologize in this video to those who I have been snippy towards or have given you a peace of mind, mind in a very negative way. Anybody that knows me knows that I am <laughs> very like opinionated and outspoken, but I never want that to be in a way that hurts other people. I always wanna remain strong and stand up for what I believe in and stand up for what is right, but I don't wanna do that in a way that hurts other people. And in September, I kind of started doing that and I felt like it was completely out of my control. Like I tried really hard to like hold my self together and I just wasn't doing as well as I usually do. Um, like a few people that come to mind is my dad, my stepmom, and a couple of my friends. Um, I'm very sorry for snapping at you or, you know, just not being my usual self. But thankfully, I realized how I got here. I think of mental health as the same as physical health. When you have a problem physically, like health-wise, your body will give you like signs, it'll give you symptoms to let you know that something is wrong so that you can take care of the problem if there is a cure or you can just treat it to make it better. With mental health, I think it is the same exact way. So you can have times in your life where you just aren't feeling good mentally, you're sad, you're depressed, you have no idea why. To me, that is a sign that something that you have gone through wasn't like stored in your memory like properly like like it needs brought back up and it needs dealt with again to store it in a mo more positive way i hope that makes sense but that's just how i take my approach with mental health just because 
I am a survivor of suicide attempts and I'm a survivor of cutting and just like severe depression, anxiety. Um, I was diagnosed when I was a teenager with uh, bipolar. Um, so this is how I take care of my health now, my mental health. So I ended up figuring out, God showed me what it was that was making me so just snippy and angry. So pretty much I was watching a movie. I can't remember what it's called, but I am going to leave the name down in the, um, the description just if you want to watch it, if you're curious. But in this movie, this teenage girl, she's probably about like 16 or 17, her parents die in a car crash and she's in the back seat of the car and um, she sees the whole thing. So she has like serious PTSD and she ends up living with her uncle and um, there's a part in the movie where she takes half a bottle of Vicodin and that was like a very sensitive scene for me just because I, when I was 16, I tried to take my own life and I took a whole entire bottle, like anywhere from like 25 to 28 pills of Darvacet and I ended up living through it. So that, seeing that scene like caused me to be like a little bit more tender and soft and open and in that moment, God just reminded me of my own experience and was like, you know, do you remember that? Do you remember that I didn't let you die and that it wasn't your time to go and it still isn't your time to go? And so like I'm having this like conversation with God in the midst of watching this movie and I realized like God just like showed me what it was, what the root of this anger that I'm currently dealing with like at the time in September of 2020. And it all came down to, it is very hard for me to reach out to people. I'm a very independent person. I build up walls. It's, you know, my own personal character defect that I am working on. And so it's very hard for me to reach out. And I, you know, over the past year have been pushing myself to reach out and all the people, not all the people, but a, a handful of people that said that if I ever needed anything to just let them know, I reached out to those people and unfortunately they weren't able to be there for me, but I couldn't be mad at them because it was like legit reasons. Like they have like families and lives of their own so what I was subconsciously doing is holding it against God. Every time that I would reach out to somebody and they couldn't be there for me because they had like something legit going on in their life, um, I was holding it against God and not even realizing it. So God revealed to me that I had all this unforgiveness bottled up that was geared towards him. And in that moment, I was just like, wow, like, you know, I'm really sorry I held that against you. And um, so I forgave God and it was like in that moment while I was, you know, having this time with God and this revelation and working on forgiving God, it was like God just like completely like lifted something out of me and I felt so peaceful and so much better. And... Um, you know, whether you're a Christian or not, whether you have you have some type of faith or not, analyzing what you're going through is really important. Analyzing how you're feeling and why are you feeling that way is very important. I don't, you know, I'm not like a scholar or, you know, somebody that has like a high degree in this kind of thing, but I do believe that the root of anger is always unforgiveness towards someone whether it is somebody in your life whether it is yourself or whether it's even god like i know a lot of people that claim that they don't believe in god but i have conversations with them and it is revealed in those conversations that they're mad at god that they're mad at the thought of a god existing and bad things happening to people and they can't understand it so like even something like that can cause anger and depression and anxiety to just build. 
So because God used this movie, this scene from this movie, I just wanted to give like a short little testimony about how I survived my suicide attempt when I was 16 years old. So I'm not going to go into details as to what I was going through just because I have forgiven all parties involved and there's no point of, you know, naming names or naming relationships or anything like that at all because I forgive them and I want them to move forward and have a good life and make good choices. So, but I will say that there was a lot of tragic things that happened in my life. Um, and I had to deal with it all at once and I was very young and I didn't know how to deal with it and it just became too much for me. And I had, at the time, I had a fractured ankle from playing football um, in PE on a frozen soccer field. I like slipped and as I was like running to catch the ball and was about to like run into somebody and I tried not to run and I tried to like, or I mean, I tried not to fall. And that's usually like the worst thing to do when you're about to fall is try not to fall. Cause I don't know, we just don't land right. So I had this whole entire bottle of um, Darvacet that they had given me because the Vicodin was making me nauseous. And um, I had only taken like a few and at this, at this point, I was like, just, I couldn't deal with everything that was going on in my mind anymore and in my heart. Like I was just overwhelmed and consumed and tormented. So I took the whole entire bottle. Um, like I said, it, I had only taken a few prior to this moment. So there was probably like between 25 and 28 pills of Darvacet and I took them all, all at one time. And, um, I was laying in my bed and I started to feel the effects of the drug. Um, I was like losing sensation in my toes and it was crawling up towards my waist and it was freaking me out and it literally, it was like the process of losing sensation. So it, to me in that moment, it felt like I was like leaving my body. And so I like started freaking out and I started crying and I started, I didn't really have a relationship with God at this point. Like I believed that he exists, existed and that was about it. Um, so I cried out to God and I was just like, look, God, like if you're listening, like I'm really sorry. Like I don't really want to die. I just can't deal with everything that I'm going through right now. And I think that was like pretty much the gist of my prayer. And then I just like started crying. Well, then all throughout the night, all these random people kept on calling my phone, keeping me up so that I couldn't fall asleep. Like I couldn't get into like a legit like REM cycle. It was just like I was, anytime I would fall asleep, like my phone would go off or something would go off, keeping me from falling into a deep sleep. And then I wake up, I get up in the morning um, to go to school and I come home that day and I it's nighttime and my dad is you know telling me good night and we're like laying on my bed and I was scared I couldn't believe that I had took it to that level and so I told my told my dad what had happened and um, the very next day he had contacted my psychiatrist and set an appointment he picked me up from school and i went to the psychiatrist and they're like we're going to admit you to the loma linda behavior medical center in loma linda california because at the time i had lived in california and i was like freaking out because you know <laughs> i was going off of insane asylums that I had seen on TV and I'm like no way are they putting me in a straight jacket <laughs> that's the only thing I could think of um so I get there and they like check me in and everything and the doctor told me he was like you may be alive right now and you may be healthy right now and we just took your blood and everything seems okay right now but you are not out of the woods and 
it doesn't mean that by the end of the week that you're gonna be okay and that you're gonna be healthy or that you're even gonna be alive. Um, he's like, what you put into your body, your liver still has to process. And um, for those of you that don't know, Darvacet is like the highest level of Tylenol. So it blocks your pain receptors and it is worse on your liver than like alcohol is to an alcoholic. Um, so they told me that they were gonna take my blood every other day to check my liver panel to see where it was at. And um, you know, I was 16, I'm like, okay, yeah, right, whatever. He's probably just telling me this just to scare me so that I don't do it again, so I'm like, whatever. But as an adult, um, I was put on, recently I was put on a medication called Darvacet um, that was in January of this year for seizures. And uh, they had to take me off of it because it was showing liver damage um and my blood work so i had just decided to like look up the symptoms of the drug and come to find out there is a smaller percentage of people that take this drug that can actually go into liver failure from the drug and it says you know it gives like next steps like what to do like how to treat this symptoms causes yada yada all that and it says that, you know, on this website that I'm reading for the drug, that even if you stop taking Depakote, even if you stop taking Depakote, I think I might have said Darvacet again, it's Depakote. It's for seizures. They also use it for antidepressants and mood stabilizers, but it's Depakote. I was using it for um, seizures. When you stop taking it, even six months later, you can still go into liver failure. So like reading that just goes to show that what the doctor told me in the Behavior Medical Center was actually true, that they weren't just trying to scare me. So I just wanted to share my story and just let whoever is watching this know, like if you know somebody or if you yourself has ever thought about taking your life, I just want to let you know that things in your life can change and like I'm not trying to sound like cliche or like cheesy or whatever but this is just this is just me this is real this is my life but there is a God out there that does not want you to end your life there is a God out there that has a life for you that is so much better than you could ever possibly imagine and you can be a version of you that you didn't think was possible with his help. I, I'm just, I'm living proof of that. So I hope that this video wasn't too long, wasn't too much of a ramble, um, and was very clear and easy to understand and relate to and connect to. Um, so if you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up, comment down below, subscribe. If you know somebody that needs to see this video, please share this video. Uh, that's the whole point of my channel is to use my life in hopes to help one person so that everything that I have gone through is completely worth it because one person that is watching this, you're worth it. I wouldn't take back anything that I've been through and I've been through hell and back. I would not take away any of that because it has led me to this video that could possibly help you. So thank you so much for watching. See you next time. Bye.